since we did one for X11, let's do one for Wayland. I ask you guys, for all the Wayland users out there, what is it that made you finally swap to Wayland, or did some of you not even realize that you've swapped? Now, as you may know, it is no secret whatsoever that I am using Wayland. Right now, I am using Niri, I've used KD Plasma in the past on the Wayland session, I've used Hyperland, I've used Sway, and for me, it's just what I've been daily driving for the past couple of years. But the main reason for me, at least initially, is Wayland was the new thing. It's what people were talking about. It's basically content, right? Like, I make videos on the things I'm doing on Linux, so I'm gonna try out new things. Most people don't have that requirement, though, so I was very curious what the average Linux user was doing. So, like last time, let's start with the super obvious one, the one that's gonna be the case for the majority of people. You didn't really think about it and it's just the default on whatever you're using. So this person here is on Kubuntu, it didn't do anything that bothered them, so they just kept using Wayland. Here we have a Fedora user that has been defaulting to Wayland for... If you're on AMD cards, I don't even know how many years at this point, and not everyone is happy about the swap, we'll say. Unfortunately, I use GNOME, but... They like Gnome, and it's the Wayland session, so they kind of just have to use it. Right now, the X11 session does exist, but very shortly, probably next version, if not the version after that, it is going to be the only option available. And some people, they didn't swap distro or swap desktop environment. It's just what they've always been using, because they're fairly new to Linux, and... By the time they swapped, it's just what the default already was. And along with that, I think this is also fairly true as well. People that just don't really think about it. It's the display server, it shows your desktop, it shows graphics, and that's basically the end of the conversation for a lot of people. Yes, it's fun to talk about these things, yes, it's fun to debate, ooh, is X11 better, is Wayland better? At the end of the day though, as long as your system is working, as long as it doesn't bother you, for a lot of people, that's all that matters, right? Like, it's it, it's just your computer, it's there for you to get work done, and that's it. And honestly, this mindset is probably the standard. It's the default on what you want, and this mindset is probably the standard. It's the default on your distro, it's the default on your desktop, and you don't really care. Of course, if you're watching a video like this, you care to some extent, but how much do you care? Probably not enough to think about it. Probably not enough to waste that much time on it. But if you're watching a video like this, it's also very possible you put a bit more thought into the environment you're running. And honestly, I could make an entire video just out of people leaving this single comment. Hyperland's existence. Hyperland. Hyperland. Better yet, you made Hyperland. I don't think people that just run desktop environments realize how important Hyperland is to Wayland adoption amongst tiling window manager users. Yes, there are things like DWL and River, and of course I'm running Niri right now, and there's Sway, but for a lot of people, that sort of rising experience with a dynamic tiling window manager is what they are looking for. And before Hyperland, there wasn't really a great option to fill that niche. Hyperland is such an important compositor. But it's not just about Hyperland. I should also go and mention Cosmic Alpha and also, like I'm running, Neri. Basically, new environments that are not supported over on the X11 side. There is no X11 session for them. So if you want to run them, Wayland is the only option you have. And there's a lot of really cool things you can do in these environments, which aren't really a thing on the X11 side. And this is a hyper niche, but there is very specific software like Wadroid that only runs on Wayland. This, I think, might be the only one. I don't know of another one that is at least notable. Wadroid is basically a way to run Android applications on top of Linux. I don't know why it only has, like, Wayland support. I do have to ask the developers about why they've done that. But this is something that has been done. And this application is quite popular. And for some people, 
might be reason enough to use Wayland. Now, there are ways you can technically circumvent it because you can run a Wayland compositor as just an application on an X11 desktop. So you could launch something like a Western and then launch Wagerroid inside of that, and that would basically achieve your goal. It's just a bit of extra hassle. Now, it's still very experimental, isn't the default on any distro, but Wine has a Wayland session. It's a thing that exists. You can enable it in most standard Wine builds because it is usually going to be compiled in. It by default is being compiled in. Now it's just behind a couple of options. When this is solved, when you can do Wayland through Proton, which is probably going to be quite a bit longer than just Wine enabling by default, you're going to be able for a lot of people to have a complete Wayland session. For a lot of people out there, this is one of those last things they need solved to not even need X Wayland on their system. Now, NVIDIA's always been like a big point with Wayland, and for some people, when they got rid of their NVIDIA GPU, hey, problem goes away. Use an AMD card, use an Intel chip, no problem whatsoever. But NVIDIA is in a much better state than it used to be, and for some people, that additional support, NVIDIA, you know, unsucking on Wayland, NVIDIA getting their shit together, fixing the drivers, things like explicit sync being brought in, has actually made that experience for some people good. Now, I have heard some reports of modern cards and modern drivers still having some issues, but most people, from what I can tell, seem to have a good experience now, or an okay experience now. Keep in mind, that is modern drivers and modern cards. If you have, I don't know, a 1050, a 1060, a 9... a 760, something like that, you're still gonna have problems. But if you're on like a 30 or a 40 series, very different situation. And for some hardware out there, if you want to run Linux, you don't really have a choice. You are going to use Wayland, or you're not going to have graphics. Asahi Linux, running Linux on the Apple Silicon. I talked about this like two or three years ago at this point, but there were some attempts to get X11 working on this hardware, and it just wasn't happening. Wayland was just a much simpler approach. Since I'm always asked, well, what features does Wayland have that X11 doesn't? Well, very simply, here's just a couple of them. Multi-monitor variable refresh rate. Multi-monitor with different refresh rates. Multi-monitor with different DPI. All of these are problems, and all of these have always been problems. So, the biggest reason why this is the case is because X11 is from the 80s, and then Xorg is based on a project from the 90s. And back then, multi-monitors, not entirely common. Now, you would have multiple people accessing the same system, but they wouldn't be in a multi-monitor configuration. It's like people, you know, networking into a server. You're not showing them all the same sort of content. And when multi-monitor support became a thing that people wanted and became somewhat convenient to use in X11, it's not that there was this sudden change in how things are being done. Multiple monitors in X11 is basically fairly good trickery. It's a hack, effectively. So there isn't multi-monitor support in X11. What there is, is one big root window, one big root monitor, and then each of your monitors is displaying a part of that root window. So it looks like multi-monitor, it acts like multi-monitor, assuming your monitors are all the same, but when you want to start having things like mixed DPI, mixed refresh rate, mixed variable refresh rate, not having a definition for a real monitor causes a problem. On the topic of things that did not exist in the 80s, HDR, high dynamic range, HDR support, and from the Lutris developer, HDR. So, yeah, this could have been added to X11. This was something that was being discussed for a very long time, but it never happened, and it's probably never going to happen because, well, there's not really that effort to make it happen. It's a thing on Wayland now, at least in a couple of environments. It's still 
slowly making its way out there implementation-wise, but it's a thing you can use. Now this one might sound stupid, but is an actual problem. Wayland allows you to disable middle mouse paste. So, <laughs> this is a weird thing where the way middle mouse pasting works isn't actually handled by the environment on X11. It's deeply baked into Xorg. And there are ways you can kind of trick it into not working, like disabling middle mouse click or every time you press the middle mouse, it will go and clean out your paste buffer. These are hacks and not actual ways to disable it on Wayland, since it's handled by the individual compositors, there's no reason why you can't disable it. Now, some things are not necessarily new, they are just better. Fixing screen tearing. This is a person that has it in Firefox. Here we have, I love this picture, billions must tear. And uh, also alongside screen tearing, stuttering. These are things which you technically can fix under X11, Compositing with things like PyCom and the compositors for KDE and GNOME do generally make it better. NVIDIA, it still can be a bit, a bit iffy, uh, especially if you want to use the way to fix screen tearing built into Xorg. That's very iffy. And then some people have the issue where if they fix the screen tearing, then it introduces stuttering. If they fix the stuttering, it introduces screen tearing. And that, for a lot of people, and for me, isn't a problem on Wayland. Now let's talk screen sharing. This is absolutely something you can do on the X11 side. Everybody knows this. It's one of those common things that's brought up. Wayland can't do screen sharing. No, it actually can. And in many ways, the way it handles screen sharing is considerably better. So for a lot of people, they do screen sharing on X11. It ends up being kind of stuttery and not a great experience. It has a lot of performance issues. In this case, cutting their FPS in half. I never had anything that bad, but I do know of other people with the exact same problem. Some people have issues with trying to capture individual windows and then those windows crashing and other weird things that don't seem to happen with the Pipewire and Portal-based solution that exists on Wayland. Also something good about that solution is Applications can't just randomly capture your desktop, which is nice. And also things like Niri have the ability to let you decide what you do and don't want to capture. So if you want to say, do not capture my password manager window, it can go and just black that out for you. That's not a thing on X11. And maybe I should have swapped this one around and put it next to the stuttering one. But here's someone that has issues with some frame pacing, which is great. So... Another thing people often talk about is scaling, fractional scaling. And, uh, <laughs> well, after the hassle of getting it working, for some, it's actually better now. Like, a better experience than what you had on X11. So, there's that as well. Now, this isn't inherent to it being Wayland, but Fedora KDE feeling more stable on Wayland. And I've heard similar things about GNOME and various other environments as well. The reason why this is the case is, especially for those major DEs, is the X11 side really isn't being maintained anymore. So when bugs crop up and they only apply to the X11 side, they don't tend to get dealt with unless there's some major blocker. So you might have some weirder crashes, you might have features not behaving the way you'd expect, and it be a slightly just not as good experience. On that note of feeling weird and kind of buggy, a general smoother experience, not necessarily because it was stuttering before or anything like that, but having VSync there, having this just very consistent, I guess it goes back to the frame pacing thing. The first time I booted up a Wayland environment, Something felt different, and I don't know what it was, but it felt more pleasant to use. And this is a common thing I see people say. Also, we have some improvements to touchpad gestures. A lot of people talked about touchpad gestures and just how much better touchpads are to use when they are using Wayland. Here we have Neil. I've talked about Neil many times. He is in many SIGs, does many things in Fedora Land. Obviously, he's been using Wayland for quite a long time, 
And what initially got him to do so was regarding video playback and on X11 it not being smooth, some decoding issues, and other people have talked about that as well, where video playback just didn't work quite right. And some people, the thing that got them onto Wayland was the security promise. Now, I do think some of that is oversold and does get in the way of useful features being developed. But just going back to things like the way window capture works, this is a nice improvement. Now, it does come with some drawbacks, like the issue with global shortcuts not being a thing, and some environments have workarounds for this, but right now, within Wayland itself, as like a general thing, there isn't a workaround that exists that is actually implemented. There is the Global Shortcuts portal, but no applications that people want to support it, support it. Now, like with Wayland being the default for some people, it being new and shiny, it just being the future and wanting to support it, that is a good enough reason to do so. Even if they're not making videos on it, there are some people out there that just like to experiment with software, like to see where things are going, and like to help out if they can. And for others, it's not necessarily that Wayland is new, it's that X11 is being deprecated. They saw it was the recommended option, and they decided to give it a try. People are talking about it, people are saying, you know, this is a cool thing to do, so that's all they needed. And, uh... <laughs> For some people, uh, <laughs> I might partially be at fault. Apparently my Wayland shilling is enough for at least this person and a couple others I did see. But it might not just be my shilling, it might be somebody else in their life who was talking about it a long time ago, and then you finally decided to give it a shot. And of course, we have to include a meme answer. I thought it looked cute. So... I know there are people that are very, very stuck on X11 and don't want to leave it behind, right? And that's totally fair, that's why I did that previous video. But just know, there are a lot of things that do improve if you are willing to give Wayland a shot. I've said this so many times before, don't listen to what I say, don't pay attention to things you might read out there about the state of Wayland, install something on your system, install a package, try it out, See what it's like. If you like it, use it. If you don't like it, don't use it. Very easy. Just experience things for yourself and get a first-hand look at the state of things. And a lot of people, when they do try it out, they're pleasantly surprised. But what do you think? Are you daily driving Wayland? Are you daily driving X11? And if you are on X11, what would make you swap? If you're on Wayland, what made you swap? I'd love to know. If you liked the video, go like the video, go subscribe as well. That'd be cool. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bear pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and Wayland's coming for you.